Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello, Gina. How are you doing today? Well, pretty good, except for the news this morning, right? I know. I I can't believe it. Um, So today, the show Reflect and Reset with Gina and Maria. And um, we're going to talk about a very serious subject. And obviously, we just started talking about Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. um, Who committed suicide, I believe. Today. Today. Yeah. Um, And we also heard of Kate Spade. Yeah. Um, So we... Uh, the show we decided to do it on depression. Yes, yes. You know, it's a, it's you don't realize that there are so many people suffering, you know, with the anxiety and and how to deal with it. And you know, and and these people, like we had talked about with Bob this morning, you know, coming from you and I, coming from different backgrounds, you know, just because I was raised in a more affluent family, I still struggled. I still struggled with anxiety and and issues. And look at Kate. Kate Spade was almost a billionaire. You know, and but you can you can't imagine what she's thinking to to end her life. Like, yeah, are things that bad? The the darkness, I guess, that you go to a place where nothing matters, mm-hmm. not your family. It doesn't matter. You don't think of the pain that you're causing. There is just no other option but I know. just to end your life. I know it's 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 a horrible horrible situation. You know, we're we're so worried about you know, these gunmen coming in and, and shooting up schools and, and and yet these kids are, you know, then there's the other side of the coin that your own child is taking their own life or, or, or your parents in the house that you're sitting in or that you're actually in. Yeah. You know, but it's... Uh, and it's uh, a, you remember the event that we went to and, and the lady oh that was boy. introducing one of the um, honorees and uh, she chucked us Oh. oh my God! We all we all our mouth dropped, right? Yeah, I, I was eating and I I stopped eating after the story. You want to tell? The yeah. Story? So we're we're at this event and it was for healthcare heroes and uh, this woman was interviewing, um, you know, introducing her um, her, her one of the honorees. one of the honorees, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and out of the blue, you know, she's doing a beautiful presentation. Out of the blue, she says that two weeks ago, she buried her twelve year old son who committed suicide because of bullying. And you know, and, and that's one of the things. How do you know? How do you how do you see the signs of, of your of your child? Yeah, you know, before it's too late, and that's the problem. It's it's too late. Yep. And that's why we are actually are going to have a guest speaker. Um, the, she's going to call in. Yeah. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. And she's going to address you know the signs of depression yeah. and and try to uh, get a little bit into the mind of someone like Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain that um you know they decided they have fame Mm -hmm. they have money and i always say material things are important because it creates uh, money is important because we it creates less stress but money is not it it's not the end of it all no Um, as we see many people with money live very unhappy life because ultimately you have to find that peace within your soul. And if you don't like the person that you are, when you when everything quiets down, when you're not partying, when you're not in your jet, when you're not in your boat, when you're not with people, you go by yourself. How do you like yourself? Yeah, you're right. right. You're right. You know, and that's one thing that we always say. The one thing you can't run away from is you. Yeah. You follow yourself wherever you go. So it, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're, like you said, if you're jetting and you're, you're off on your boat or, you know, you got it, you, you have to be okay with yourself and what, what's happening inside. Yeah. And that's, and that's, the, that's the, the curiosity is, you know, people on the outside look in to say, wow, what a life. I wish I was her. I wish I was him. You know, and you said it, Maria. You yeah. said that he had the perfect life and that was the life you wish you were leading. I, you know, my son intro- introduced me to Anthony Bourdain and... I, I remember telling my son, oh, my God, I, I love to eat. He eats food from yeah. all over the world. I love people. He's connecting with every culture. He's, I love to travel. He's traveling. And I would say he has the perfect job. Yeah. That is the job that I you want. You actually said he had the perfect life. The perfect life. Right? Not yep. thinking that this is his job. What does his life really consist yeah. of? And what is what happened? What happened to him maybe that nobody knows because we're looking at him as the celebrity and the guy we wish we wish we could be, yeah. You know, and 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 what happened? Yeah, the dark side. And you know, I always say, Gina, um, that what we have to do is we have to face 
the facts in our lives. We have to realize, you know, if we are really deeply unhappy, we have to let, we have to accept it and say, what do I do? What actions do I take to make that change? And, and is it that, but is it also that people can't identify it? Like you can become depressed and you'll and be like, it. I'm not depressed. Yeah. I don't think I'm depressed, yeah. but you are, you are certifiably depressed. Right. You know, it's, it's that ache that you just don't even, that don't even realize is happening. But yeah, I know. I, I, I definitely understand. And you know, for everyone out there who, who, who might think or know somebody who thinks that there's no other choice, you know, there is a hotline to call. I mean, give it the one last ditch effort to, to, to make that phone call and you can call the suicide hotline, you know, at 1-800-273-8255. These people are trained professionals to talk you off the ledge, you know, because yeah. again, we don't understand. We don't know what's going through somebody's mind that could say that this is the only way. And if you think you're getting the last word, you're not. Yeah. Well, you know, I also shared with you that um, when I was a child, yeah. I went through a very, very difficult childhood and experienced that, um, an experience that was very dramatic in my life. And I, I went to a very dark place at the age of 11. Mm -hmm. So I was, I could understand because at that age, I felt that life was not worth living. Mm -hmm. And I thank God, you know, my mother did get me help. And which is pretty ironic because especially in the Latino culture, when when you go to a psychologist, you know, it's something that it's almost there is a, a stigma, uh, a stigma yeah. that, you know, you're crazy. So a lot of people don't reach for help because they feel that they're going to be uh, identified as crazy. Yeah. And I remember I got the help and I was able to get better. But I have to say I lived with anxiety for about 15 years of my life. Wow. And I was, I was able to work really, really hard to get out of it. And I, I am extremely happy to tell you that I live it a life. It doesn't haunt you anymore. Not yeah. at all. But it took me years to get yeah. there. And it, a lot of work, uh, a lot of self-improvements. I went through six years of therapy. But I realized that I needed to get therapy. And I was so broken that in the mornings I could not... I had a hard time breathing. Mm, wow. And I found a way to sort of deal with it and act. I mean, I had a very successful job and a very successful career. And when I would tell people that I lived with anxiety, they would not believe it. Right. But I found a way of acting. And if you look at the people like uh, Anthony Bourdain, mm -hmm. um, he was acting a role. Yeah. Because when you saw him on TV, he looked yeah. happy. And think about that, Maria, you know, what, what you said, you know, you were acting, you know, and, and it was like to the point where, you know, you're, you're becoming something that you're not, yeah. you know, you're not letting out the real issues, but you did, right? You did. So you don't know if people suppress it, suppress it. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, you have that, you, you, you just can't do anymore. Right. So um, we have our um, licensed clinical social worker who is going to that's on the phone with us now, Kayla Cashman, is going to join us and, and kind of help us understand a little bit about what we're talking about and what's happening. Great. Hi, Kayla. Hi, how are you? Good morning, Kayla. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Kayla. Thank you so much for calling. No problem at all. So we were, um, you know, Marie and I were talking this morning, actually, before the radio show, and, you know, we heard about Anthony um, Bourdain's uh, suicide and then which followed Kate, you know, Kate Spade. And, you know, just to understand, like, you know, what could these people be dealing with to the point where there's just no, there's no turning back, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's hard for us to, to put ourselves in their shoes and understand really what they're going through to make such a bold and, and kind of unclear decision, I imagine, at that time for them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this follows uh, an increase in suicide in, in each state. Um, over the past couple of years. Um, so it's, it's certainly an issue that we need to be paying attention to and talking about. So I think it's great that you, you know, are bringing this up as a topic uh, yeah. for your today. Yeah, and then, you know, and I was telling, uh, you know, we were telling Maria, we were just talking about the lady at, at the event. Yeah, a kid, 
a kid that is 11, 12 years old. 12 right? years old. Like, what, 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 how do you think um, we can help the listeners? Like, if you have a child that, uh, like, what are the signs that you should be looking for on a 12 year old? Mm-hmm. Well, we should be looking, you know, even younger than that really to the signs and symptoms of, of the health and wellness of, of our kids' minds. Um, I think looking for, you know, one thing that I, I think is really important for, for parents and for providers and just people in the community um, is really trying to put yourself in the child's shoes or in the other person's shoes and understanding with empathy and compassion um, is really important and, and it, it sets a mind frame um, to understand what, what another person is going through and what a child is going through. So I think that, you know, changing our mind frame a little bit more um, about, you know, how we approach, approach our youth, um, mm-hmm. whether it's consequences or setting kind of boundaries with them, um, I think it's important for us to, to understand any sort of rejection or failure that they may feel in some vulnerable moments. So just, you know, connecting with them and and, um, spending the time with them to understand how their day went. You know, did any teachers yell at you today or um, how were the kids at school today? Were there anyone that was bullying you? And, and, you know, a lot of kids will steer away from the term bullying. So asking a broader question of, you know, was anyone playing around with you too much that offended you or upset you or hurt your feelings? so really connecting is an overall theme that I think is really important for parents and, and um, just yeah. individuals to, to really understand. Um, so some of the, just to give a little bit of a handhold or a grasp on some of the signs or symptoms that we should be looking for are um, really any significant change in mood or academic performance or physical performance, um, any withdrawal of the, the children, you know, if they usually have dinner with you and, tonight they're staying in the room, obviously that's going to be a, a warning sign. Um, but it may be even less uh, obvious to the parents. Um, so if they're more in, you know, engaged in their phone or less engaged in their phone, start a conversation about it. Um, if they're not spending time with their friends on the weekends and said they're watching Netflix all, week, all weekend, um, start a conversation there and let them know that you're there to listen and hear them and help them through whatever they're going through. Give yeah. kids guidance. And do you think do you think that even with the adult population that those are the signs as well? You know, to see someone who may be not as not not out there as much anymore, or like you know, I don't know what happened with Anthony Bourdain, but it's like uh, mm-hmm. you know, you think that he's the worldly type. Maybe you know, maybe there were other symptoms of him, you know, not engaging when he wasn't mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. TV or, or or at the job, you know. Quite possibly. I think it looks different for, for everybody. I've heard a lot of times um, with um, the survivors of, of someone, someone who, who you know, uh, successfully killed themselves, which I don't like that term, but um, their family and friends say, you know, I didn't see anything. I didn't see these signs or symptoms. So that's the frustrating part for the people who are around. Um, and sometimes it doesn't look like they're so withdrawn or so um, depressed looking. Um, so... Mm-hmm you know, focus on themselves, sometimes, you know, what happens is when someone starts to feel better out of coming out of their depression, they actually get enough energy to go through with some of the plans they previously made. Mm-hmm. So even looking for, um, like, inflated mood. So any, any significant change in mood or behavior, not necessarily the way that we think about it, which would be, you know, they should be, you know, you would think that they would be more depressed or sad, but sometimes even inflated moods. Um, mm. can be a sign of symptoms. So it, it, Ooh, think about you really that. have to be a, aware and uh, in tune with the things that are, that peop- the way that people are behaving. Um, yeah, but sense. there are some, some protective factors that we can really um, focus in on here, too. Um, but actually, let me go back to a few of the signs and symptoms, too. Um, talking slowly or decreased or increased energy. Um, having trouble sitting still and feeling restless, some appetite change, um, and some, you know, if, if somebody was previously engaging with you or talking about their feelings and now they're, they're not, um, that may be a sign that yeah. you know, something is going on, they need help. Um, so if you're seeing any of these signs and anyone that you, you interact with, you know, encourage them to get help. 
yeah. normalize the idea of therapy for them. Yeah, and even, and even you know, at our facility, right? You know, we have our providers that see uh, patients and, and we, you know, we diagnose or they diagnose depression, you know, and, and it, shouldn't, yeah. it shouldn't be for any provider just to hand them a pill, you know, mm-hmm. with, along with that pill, that, that, that um, Xanax or whatever it is that these doctors yeah. give out, you know, there should be a prescription for therapy. You know, Absolutely. because it's not a pill isn't going to help you. Yeah. You know, it's not going to get to the root of the problem. It's going to keep keep you a little calm. But you know, nowadays, if you notice, most of these people depend on this medication. On the medication. You know, get mm-hmm. to the root of it. Absolutely, and some you know, medication can be very helpful in terms of lifting some of the depression. So that talk therapy can be really effective and helpful. Um, but you don't develop those skills with just a pill. So learning really how to navigate difficult situations that, you know, responding to failure, responding to ge- rejection um, can really benefit, you know, everybody really. Um, so yeah. I think that could be really helpful. And, and for anyone who is struggling with depression um, or anxiety or any mental health issue, get help. And, and don't be ashamed of asking for help. We all need it. Um, generally, every therapist that I've ever worked with or spoken with um, gets their own therapy as well, and, and it's nothing to be ashamed of, about, but we all need assistance in navigating life because and, it's really, yeah. really I, difficult. I think that's an extremely important point that you just made. You know, we all need therapy. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, therapy should be available like preventive care. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, uh, the healthcare system does not see it that way. You know, we, they don't, many of them do not cover um, mm-hmm. Uh, right, right. No. Treatment. Yeah. Uh-uh. It's it's um and people struggle to get treatment. This yeah. is the reason. And I, it's expensive. It is uh, almost unaffordable yeah. to most people. You either, yeah. if you are poor, if you're very poor, they you can get Medicaid and you can get services that are going to see you for free. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you are in the middle, it is unaffordable, yeah. and we see yeah. it in our own office, Gina. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even with our staff, totally. our staff has struggled to get help when yeah. we. This is the reason why for us with the medical membership we talked about eventually yeah. when the medical membership grows to where it needs to grow, we want to include it in every, in every, in, in every, in every plan. level, yeah. every plan. And uh, because this is something that m- I would say everybody needs. We don't have life figure out. We yeah. are trying. Everyone is trying to figure out life. You know, and, and if you remember from the, from the second show that we did, I had talked about, um, you know, my daughter, Erica, right? Yeah. When she had gone to therapy for the first time, you know, this kid had this hood over her head with, like, wanting to be closed from the world, you know, and, and, and sealed tight. And then gradually, weeks, months, the hood started opening and opening and then coming down. And Erica was showing her true self, you know, and that's the problem. People are hiding and becoming something, or be, you know, and I'm using that in, 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 a, in a different way, but... You know, they hide to not show their true self. Yeah. And it's, you got to, like we said, you got to love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, you know, how are you going to go through the next day? How are you going to look at yourself in the mirror? How are you going to live with yourself when you go to sleep? You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one second, guys. So Reflect and Reset with Maria and Gina. And I want any of the listeners that want to call and ask a question either to Kayla or to us, um, call 914-636-0110. 636 636- 0110. All right. So um, talking about, again, affordability of uh, psychotherapy, yeah. it, it is it's the big issue. And we see it uh, in our office all the time. Um, people, even when we were charging like $60, yeah. even that was hard for some people to yeah. afford. Because if you think about it, it's $60 a week. Because, mm-hmm. uh, and you tell me, uh, Kayla, but uh, will you say that most people, at least for the next, you know, for the first few months, are going to see a therapist and they should be seeing them once a week? Or w- what's Absolutely. your opinion on that? Absolutely. It may, you know, it differs from patient to patient, but typically um, I would recommend for at least the first two to three months that they begin with individual therapy uh, once a week. Um, it helps develop the rapport, forming trust, um, and it gets the client comfortable and sharing and expressing and really taking home and doing some homework in those weeks in between so that they have more of a handhold and then transitioning to every other week or so. And what happens after the, the session is over? 
Um, and you always, you know, I've, like, I, I've been through a lot of therapy, and mm-hmm. I always feel, like, rejuvenated after the, after the yeah. session. I feel like I can handle the world. And then tomorrow I'm the same way, and, the next day, and then the next day comes, and I'm back to where I was. You know, mm-hmm. what happens, like, you know, I had, thank God I had a, somebody I was working with that would take my phone call. I mean, mm-hmm. she, she did a lot of hours with me, a lot of hours. Mm-hmm. But what do you do in a case like that when you're scheduled once a week? Yeah, when, so if, if the patient is feeling like they're not, the once a week isn't enough, I will double and, and do twice a week. And, and maybe if, even if that's not enough, then I will, um, if it's a child, I'll speak with the parents and with the child and, and talk about a higher level of care. So there's things like uh, intensive outpatient programs, there's hospitalization, right. there's day programs, there's other options that are a high lo- higher level of care, but if it's, you know, once a week, um, and that doesn't feel like enough. I, I might go to two times a week for the for you know the next two weeks or so, and, and play it out case by case. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm you know I'm somebody who, um, who definitely takes calls over the weekend, especially with the more severe cases. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. And I, you know, there's in terms of just uh, depression and, and suicidality, um, that's something that you know as a clinician I, I certainly take seriously, and I want to make sure that all my patients feel safe and um, so I'll make sure that they have resources for emergency um, contacts whether it's my number or a community a community based resource um, but there's always a safety plan in action um, if there is ever a thought of suicide so we call that suicidal ideation um, and so if, if that is an issue or a thought that that is in play then we certainly create a plan to make sure that that child or that, that individual is safe and secure. Well, um, a lot goes so, into it. Yeah. yeah, a lot goes into it. It's not just, you know, that hour. Um, it's usually a couple hours a week with each patient, whether it's with them or, out, you know, on my own time and, and kind of case planning for that, for that person. So really on an individual basis. Um, but I, I would say if you're feeling like that for over a couple months, definitely talk to your therapist about it and, create a new plan that that does work and does feel secure and safe for you. Right. And I think the conversation will start uh, with the primary care doctor many times, right? Who really needs to. Yeah. And that is, you know, I always say preventive medicine is so important. Um, So, and that's why it's important you have a physical, right? When a lot of people don't take that time for one once a year. Right. And when you go to the doctor, you might not realize that you have the sign of depression, yeah. but that physical could lead into trying to. Help and we you, have right? that screening, you know, that they yeah. they uh, it's a yes or no, screening. yes or no, and just from those answers, you know, the providers are able to see, you know, which of the patients are suffering from depression, and you know, and, and Maria and I realized, you know, in our own practice that there are there are so many diagnoses that we're seeing of depression that we actually decided to bring on our psychotherapist. So we have a psychotherapist that is working with us now. Um, and she was also supposed to call in today too. Kayla, thank you so much for, for calling in because uh, she got sick and yeah. uh, last minute she, she was very sick today. So, um, um, so we wish that she feels better, but, um, anyway, so, but we, we realized that there was such a problem. So we said, you know what, we need to bring somebody on now. Yeah. You know, so these yeah. people that are that that have these symptoms or have these diagnoses, we can reach out to them and say, would you like to speak to our psychotherapist? Because at this point, we have made it so affordable that yeah. there is absolutely no reason why you can't see them. And and that's our goal to continue making yeah. it affordable. Because, because when they when you turn around and say, well, I just can't afford it. You know what? No, 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 no. This is your life. Every, this is somebody's life, you know, yeah. and, and I. I really hope that someday the insurance uh, companies will get it and that they will cover this like they cover primary care, right? The yeah. preventive medicine, they, they cover you for physical, they cover you for, the, uh, for women, you know, yeah. for a yearly exam. Yeah. This is something that if, if you feel you need therapy, this is something that should be covered by the insurance company. And ironically, a lot of the illnesses start in your mind, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You start getting mm-hmm. depressed, you have anxiety, and that leads into other um, uh, physical, issues. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, we, we need to start yeah. focusing and you know on what? And, and again, you know, Kayla and, and Maria, it's, it's, there is another option, you know? And, and just pick, like I said earlier, pick up the phone, 
before before you do it, just pick up the phone. Let somebody who is trained to talk to you, you know, because maybe you're looking at something differently. And, and you know, so please don't forget, you know, 1-800-273-8255, suicide prevention. These guys are trained. Just pick up the phone and, and, and make one last-ditch effort to save your own life, yeah. you know. Kayla, so um, lifestyle, right? We need to... Um, there are many other things that we can do aside from getting therapy, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. meditate. What do you think of meditation? I think meditation is extremely powerful. What do you think? I think I, I, I certainly agree. Meditation is uh, part of my therapy uh, homework assignments almost with all of my patients. Um, I find some resistance at first, of course, because it's very hard to okay. get into and really feel comfortable with because it's so uncomfortable when you're feeling down or depressed or anxious to sit with those thoughts but that is a part of the process entirely so i, I certainly agree thank with you kayla we got it. we're wrapping it up now thank okay. you so much kayla we in. really appreciate your information was on point thank you so much for supporting yeah. us and we'll look forward to seeing everybody again friday next friday at 9 30 and yes maria have a great weekend you too my love okay take care take care everyone bye-bye